Welcome to a lesson on the upper and lower bounds for the chromatic number of a graph. Let's begin with a review. A planar graph is a connected graph that can be drawn in which the edges do not cross. A proper vertex coloring or proper coloring of a graph G is the assignment of colors to the vertices such that all adjacent vertices have different colors. And the chromatic number of a graph G is the smallest number of colors needed to get a proper vertex coloring, which is denoted chi of G. What is the largest chromatic number for any planar graph? The answer is the best known theorem of graph theory, which is the four color theorem. If G is a planar graph, then the chromatic number of G is less than or equal to four. Thus, any map can be colored with four or fewer colors. If we take a look at the graphs at the bottom of the screen, first we have a graph with six vertices. Notice how it is connected and no edges cross. This indicates the graph is planar. So now we know the chromatic number is less than or equal to four. Next, we have the graph of K4, the complete graph on four vertices. This doesn't look planar, but we can regraph this to look like the graph on the right, which does indicate the graph is planar, and therefore the chromatic number is less than or equal to four. And now let's talk about clicks. A click in a graph is a set of vertices, all of which are pairwise adjacent. In other words, a click of size n is just a copy of the complete graph K sub n. We define the click number of a graph to be the largest n for which the graph contains a click of size n. Any click of size n cannot be colored with fewer than n colors, so we have a nice lower bound. Brings us to the next theorem, which states, the chromatic number of a graph G is at least the click number of G. Going back to the graphs at the bottom of the screen, notice how the graph with six vertices has multiple copies of, of K sub three, the complete graph on three vertices, this is the largest click size in the graph, which indicates the click number is three. So because the click number is three and we have a planar graph, we now know the chromatic number of G must be greater than or equal to three because of the click number and less than or equal to four because the graph is planar. Looking at the graph of K4, the entire graph is a click because all the vertices are pairwise adjacent and therefore the click number of the graph is four. This indicates that chi of G, the chromatic number, is less than or equal to four because we have a planar graph and greater than or equal to four because the click number is four. Well, the chromatic number has to be greater than or equal to four and less than or equal to four. We know the chromatic number of G must be four. And this should make sense because, again, we have the complete graph on four vertices and therefore the smallest number of colors needed for a proper coloring is four. Each vertex must be a different color. But let's go back to the graph on the left and see if the chromatic number is three or four. We'll start with any vertex in any color. Notice this vertex is adjacent to three vertices. These three vertices can't be blue. So let's label this vertex green, this vertex orange. For the vertex here on the right, we could reuse the color of green because this vertex is not adjacent to the green vertex. Now we'll go down to the vertex in the lower left-hand corner. We can reuse the color blue because this vertex is not adjacent to the blue vertex. And then for the last vertex, we can't use blue, orange, or green, and therefore we have to use a different color. Let's use pink. The smallest number of colors for a proper coloring of the graph is four the chromatic number of G is four. Which notice is in the closed interval from three to four. There are times when the chromatic number of G is equal to the click number, which we saw on the graph of K4. These graphs have a special name, they're called perfect. If we know that a graph is perfect, then finding the chromatic number is simply a matter of searching for the largest click. However, not all graphs are perfect. For an upper bound, we can improve on the number of vertices by looking to the degrees of the vertices. We let del G be the largest degree of any vertex in the graph of G. Let's find del G for each of the graphs below. For the graph on the left, notice the vertex with the highest degree is vertex C. Vertex C has five edges emanating from it, and therefore del G is equal to five. Next, we have the complete graph on six vertices, which is K6. Each vertex has degree five, del G equals five. Next we have 
the cycle on five vertices, where each vertex has degree two, del G equals two. This leads us to Brooks' theorem, which states, any graph G satisfies the chromatic number of G is less than or equal to del G, where again, del G is the largest degree of any vertex of G, unless G is a complete graph or an odd cycle, in which case the chromatic number of G is equal to del G plus one. Let's first look at the special cases where we have a complete graph in an odd cycle. Again, we're told here that the chromatic number of G is equal to del G plus one. So for the complete graph on six vertices, where del G is equal to five, the chromatic number of G is equal to five plus one or six, which indicates each vertex must be colored a different color in order to have a proper vertex coloring of the graph. And that should make sense because every vertex is adjacent to every other vertex in the graph. The smallest number of colors to get a proper coloring of the graph is six. And now let's look at the graph of C sub five. Notice how this is an odd cycle because we have an odd number of vertices. So we can start with any color and then go to a second color and alternate colors around the cycle. So far we've only used two colors but because we have an odd number of vertices, when we get to the last vertex, it will be adjacent to two vertices using the two colors we've been alternating, which is why we have to add one more color. The smallest number of colors to get a proper coloring is three. The chromatic number of G is equal to del G plus one, two plus one is three, giving the chromatic number of G equal to three. And now let's go back to the graph on the left and determine this is not a complete graph or an odd cycle, and therefore we know that the chromatic number of G is less than or equal to del G, which means in our case, the chromatic number of G is less than or equal to five. So let's go ahead and start with vertex C, which we've already colored yellow. Let's color vertex A blue and vertex B green. And now if we take a look at vertex D, we can reuse either blue or green because vertex D is not adjacent to vertex A or vertex B. Let's color vertex D blue. And now let's go down to vertex F. Vertex F is adjacent to vertex C, which is yellow, and vertex E, which is not colored yet. We can reuse blue or we can reuse green for vertex F, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and reuse blue. And then finally for vertex E, which is adjacent to vertex D, C, and F, we cannot use the colors of blue and yellow, but we can use the color of green again. We can color vertex E with green. The smallest number of colors to have a proper coloring of the graph is three. The chromatic number of G is equal to three. And of course, three is less than or equal to five. To summarize, for a graph G, the chromatic number of G is greater than or equal to the click number and less than or equal to del G, unless G is a complete graph or an odd cycle, then the chromatic number of G equals del G plus one. And from the four color theorem, if G is a planar graph, then the chromatic number of G is less than or equal to four. I hope you found this helpful.